In the first two lessons, we covered a lot of ground. We discussed salivary glands, vitamins A and D, oil pulling, long chain fatty acids, vitamin C, the calcium to phosphorus ratio, and healing cavities as a vegan. I told you a little about myself and my dental healing story in lesson two, but now I'm going to give you the full details. In this lesson, we're also going to talk about seeds, selenium, and zinc. Welcome to lesson three of Raiderly's Teeth Remineralizing Masterclass. Once again, I'm your host, Raiderly. use of dental tools, I am not a dentist. Anything that I say, you follow at your own risk. Kat, who I told you about in lesson two, hadn't been to the dentist in over a year. And wellness mama Katie hadn't been to the dentist in close to two years. When I first began writing this masterclass in the summer of 2018, I had not been to a dentist in 13 years. My dental decay began because of my orthodontist, ironically. There are major reasons why I've completely fallen out of respect for Western medical practices. When I had braces installed, the orthopedist put too much cement on my molars, and worse, when the braces were removed, some of the cement was left behind. At first, I had this annoying cement on my molar. Less than a year later, I had a brown spot there instead. All the while, this tooth was hurting, beginning the day they installed my braces. My teeth were actually straight prior to getting braces. I opted for braces because I had been punched in the face by a girl a few years older than myself. Her punch left my front teeth literally dangling in my mouth. My mother grabbed my teeth and pushed them back into place. This was probably the most painful thing that I have ever experienced, but it saved my teeth. Unfortunately, my teeth stayed wiggly, and I was terrified they would fall out. I drank through a straw for a month. I refused to chew or brush. I got braces to ensure my teeth would stay in place. The orthodontist decided that one of my molars was sideways and therefore ought to be rotated. This process was painful and took months. It crowded all of my lower teeth, which ultimately led to me having very crooked front teeth after the braces came off. Thanks for nothing, Western methods. Too bad my mom didn't know about the nutrition I needed to make my teeth latch on firmly on their own. I asked my dentist about the sensitivity in my teeth, and he told me to avoid cold beverages, as if I couldn't figure that out on my own at the age of 13. Seriously. Later, when I was 14, that same tooth that had been bothering me when I'd had the braces was now changing color. It had a large brown spot spreading across the top of it. I asked my dentist about the spot, He said it was just a stain, and nothing to worry about. I frowned and said to my dentist, But that's the same tooth that hurts a lot. He said, It can't be that tooth. It has healthy gums around it. Maybe the tooth behind it is bothering you. I couldn't believe it. He was telling me that I couldn't tell which of my own teeth was bothering me, as if I had never looked in the mirror with my mouth wide open and touched that tooth and then winced. I knew what I was talking about, and I told him as much. He reaffirmed that it was just a stain and that I shouldn't worry about it. That molar continued to hurt on and off. Mom suggested I take calcium supplements, which I did. It seemed to help a little with the sensitivity. By the time I was 16, this stain had become a dent in my tooth. When I was 18, the tooth began to hurt a lot. I discovered clove essential oil, which I applied without dilution to the area with my fingertip. After applying the clove oil, I would attempt not to move my tongue for as long as possible while the clove oil did its magic. It made the pain stop completely, which was a huge relief. Later, I learned that clove oil is an essential item in a holistic medical kit for killing bacteria, especially oral bacteria. My tooth continued to slowly disappear, in phases. Some years, it didn't seem to get worse at all. But other years, I felt dismay as I looked at it and found the hole had widened. It may be useful to note that during these years, I already was on an exceptionally good diet without any processed foods at all, and certainly no refined sugar. That's right, you can get tooth decay even if you remove all sugary foods from your diet. 
Based on my extensive reading in early 2018, I concluded that the tooth was not dead, but that it was unlikely to fill back in. Holes in teeth can become hard, healthy, and immune to decay, but only pinpoint cavities have shown themselves capable of filling back in. I'm still hopeful that I can one day become an exception to this rule, if for no other reason than I'd like to have very impressive before and after photos to inspire others. I, of course, took photos of my cavities a few times in my 20s. Since I started eating Green Pastures Royal Blend of fermented cod liver oil and butter oil consistently, turning away from my own vegan path, I have rarely had any sensitivity in my teeth. Also, my joint pain went away for years. When my joint pain returned, it was due to being overly sedentary and neglecting to eat salads. When I began doing yoga again and eating daily salads again, the joint pain was eliminated again. Since 2012, when I was 23, I've been consuming raw milk, sometimes regularly and sometimes returning to a fully vegan diet. But raw milk was not enough to heal my cavities on its own. For more on my decision to move away from a raw vegan diet to an intuitive diet, you can read my article, Intuitive Eating. Some people, however, do find that raw milk from grass-fed animals is enough to heal their cavities, especially when the cavities are a recent development. Besides the major cavity, careful examination found five teeth with some spots of decay. However, when I finally visited a dentist in the autumn of 2018, I was relieved to discover that all of my efforts had worked. None of these teeth were soft, sore, or decaying. Even with money to earn by drilling my teeth, they were not able to tell me that any part of my mouth needed work. This was great peace of mind. It isn't surprising to discover how much tooth decay I had. It turns out that tooth decay isn't about sugars and acids on the teeth. It's about spiking your blood sugar and how this changes your hormonal patterns. The gland responsible for telling your body to build more dentin and enamel stops giving you that signal when you spike your blood sugar. Because my most severe issues historically have been digestive, I learned to eat simple meals of just fruits without anything else to help heal my stomach. It worked. I did recuperate my digestive system using a raw food diet where I ate nothing but fruit for the first half of the day. I figured I didn't need to worry about spiking my blood sugar with fruit because I was eating only natural sugars, and because my overall hormonal balance should be very healthy considering how many leafy greens I ate and how well I managed my stress. It is possible to create a hormonal imbalance that is virtually identical to spiking your blood sugar from stress alone. That's right, you can develop insulin resistance from stress. In retrospect, I have wondered how much of my fruit-only breakfasts have contributed to my tooth decay. And in even further retrospect, I have wondered how much I was really keeping my stress levels down. Starting in my early 20s, I supplemented with vitamin K2 and vitamin D2 sporadically. I did oil pulling here and there. I wrote about taking care of teeth naturally, healing gum infections, and healing canker sores in much detail. Yet, Prior to 2018, in April, I had never done any of this consistently. I had never combined all of these methods with avoiding blood sugar spikes. And worst of all, in 2017, I began eating a lot of oats, often a whole cup of rolled oats every day. Oats and tooth decay. Oats in particular are one of the hardest seeds to remove phytic acid from. Soaking and cooking do little to remove the phytic acid. Oats are also terribly difficult to remove lectins from, even with pressure cooking. Ancient peoples were known to ferment their oats for weeks. Perhaps they intuitively knew something that we didn't. My entire life I've eaten a large amount of oats. Growing up I ate a lot of oatmeal and also cold cereals that were based on oats. In my late teens I became desperate to eat healthier and resolve my stomach pain. During that time, I ate a lot of organic oat-based, honey-sweetened granola and muesli with rice milk. As a raw vegan, I used rolled oats in making my delicious ginger cookie recipe. A simple spin in the food processor creates a sticky, delicious mixture of raisins, rolled oats, fresh ginger root, and cinnamon. I quickly discovered that this mixture hurt my stomach and I blamed the raisins. Later I discovered that raw oats bothered my stomach, which was quite interesting when most foods bothered my stomach when cooked, but not when raw. For example, pasteurized dairy hurts my stomach and makes my skin break out, and makes my glands sore around my throat, but raw dairy consumed in the same moderation does not do this to me. 
although both forms of dairy make me sleepy for a period of time after consumption, and raw dairy in excess has been known to distress my lymphatic system. I assumed this was entirely about raw versus cooked dairy, but I discovered another piece of the puzzle, lectins, which I write about in my article, My First Three Weeks on the Plant Paradox Program. I found that having home-rolled organic oats with boiling water, fresh ginger root, and blueberries agreed with my stomach nicely, and even contributed to keeping me regular. At times I practically lived on oats with berries. The berries probably have helped negate some of the impacts, as antioxidants are shown to help prevent bone loss, even in the presence of a diet rich in phytic acid. However, it adds a bit of irony that blueberries can cause temporary dental sensitivity due to their acidity. Dental health researcher Ramil Nigel states that all of the worst cases of tooth decay he has seen happen in individuals who are heavy oat eaters. If you're a heavy oat eater too, I hope this will serve as a wake-up call for you as it did for me. Seeds and tooth decay. Let's zoom out for a moment and now look at seeds in general. Oats are a seed, and possibly one of the worst for your teeth, but other seeds aren't bone-building either. I have a hunch that phytic acid is only a part of the picture when it comes to the negative impacts of seeds on teeth. As a nutrition expert and raw vegan, I spent a lot of time conversing with other raw vegans and health experts. I have been fond of learning from books as well as learning from people in person. I repeatedly found that the healthiest raw vegans ate a low seed diet, especially low nuts or no nuts, which is what inspired my first recipe book, Nut Free Raw Recipes. My first recipe book, written when I was 20, used a lot of coconut, which I now know to also be rich in phytic acid. And coconut, while perhaps not a nut, is still a seed. Many raw vegans have learned to blame fat, which will cause them to cut out coconuts, nuts, and most seeds as well. This fat blaming works in a raw vegan diet because in the absence of fat, you have to eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. A fruitarian diet can work, but it does not entail eating 100% fruit. It entails eating around 80% fruit, 15% vegetables, and 5% seeds. This diet is so successful because of its richness in antioxidants, including vitamin C. The more antioxidants in your diet, the more your body will efficiently eliminate toxins and utilize nutrients. A good friend of mine is an organizer of the fruit and sport events where people gather to eat a fruitarian diet for the length of the retreat and stay very physically active during the same time period. This friend of mine is a fruitarian herself, and in her late 50s, she has rock-hard abs and incredible endurance. Her bones, however, are not in the best health. Not all fruitarians or raw vegans are healthy, however. Some raw vegans are rather unhealthy in general, those who consume a lot of agave nectar and a nut-rich diet. Some fruitarians are energetic, but have a lot of joint pains and or poor skin and or tooth decay. I found that these fruitarians eat too many fruits that are high in sugar and relatively low, as fruits go, in antioxidants, such as bananas, pears, and apples. A fruit-rich diet should emphasize fruits rich in antioxidants, such as kiwis, berries, mangoes, and fruits that are not sweet, such as avocados and olives. No matter how you slice my observations, one fact has repeatedly surfaced. The healthier raw vegans are the ones who eat a low-seed or no-seed diet, And what's incredible about this is that it matches up with the findings of Weston Price, who advocated a diet rich in animal products. He also found that a diet rich in seeds led to poorer health and more dental cavities. Many people are going gluten-free and finding the benefits from this. Many people are switching to a paleo diet and finding benefit in eliminating most or all beans and nuts from their diet. This particular trend is not just something found in teeth healing diets or vegan diets or omnivorous diets. It's found everywhere. Originally, I began writing this masterclass four months before reading The Plant Paradox. This book confirmed my hunch that much more is going on with seeds than just phytic acid. One major reason to avoid seeds is to avoid plant toxins called lectins. Gluten, by the way, is a lectin. I write about this subject in detail in my article that I've already mentioned before, my first three weeks on the Plant Paradox program. Think about the whole plant. Imagine a mulberry tree, a potato, a raspberry bush, 
a dandelion or a purslane plant. Imagine a plant that you know well, one where you can visualize its roots, its stalks, its flowers, fruits, and seeds. Plants vary dramatically, but even so, plants by volume roughly look like this. 20 to 40% root, 20 to 70% leaves, 10% to 40% stalk, 1 to 20% fruit, and 1 to 10% seeds. Why would we eat a diet where half of our calories come from seeds, when proportionally seeds make up so much less of the plant? And there is so much more edible food readily available all summer long, leaves being the most abundant. You may already know the answer. Seed consumption has been traditionally very high because it can be stored for the winter. Granaries held vast amounts of grain in ancient cultures to ward off famine. People were not concerned about thriving to their maximal health during the winter or during a drought. They were worried about seeking enough calories to survive. If you're watching this masterclass, then you have access to a computer and the internet. You're here because you want to thrive. You want a life without aches and pains. You want high levels of energy, and you want to have hard, healthy teeth without cavities or sensitivity. This means that you're not in the same situation as our ancestors who relied on seeds to make it through the winter. Even if you're on a small income, you can afford an organic diet, rich in fruits and vegetables. I know, because I lived on less than $8,000 per year for many years and consumed a completely organic diet. It wasn't always the easiest choice, but I'm proud of my stalwart commitment to my greatest wealth, my health. Preparing seeds in a way that healthy ancient cultures did is a lot of extra fuss. Soaking, sprouting, fermenting, and pressure cooking are recommended, and even so, not all of the phytic acid is removed. That isn't to say that seeds have no value or should be entirely eliminated for the rest of your life, but I decided to limit my seeds to one soaked Brazil nut per day for the first six weeks of my teeth healing protocol. In my early 30s, I rarely eat more than two forms of seed in a day. For example, I might have two tablespoons of ground flaxseed on my salad and one soaked Brazil nut. Now that I'm past the hurdles in healing my teeth, I do occasionally eat a quarter cup of oats steeped in boiling water from my tea kettle. To give you an idea of reasonable seed moderation, here are the seeds that I eat. Note that I always use small servings ranging from a couple tablespoons to a quarter cup. Sesame in the form of roasted golden tahini. Hemp seeds and ground flaxseed on my wraps and salads. Almond flour in my lectin-free tortillas or crackers. Cacao in my myriad raw desserts. Hazelnuts as the primary ingredient in my raw brownies, which are just hazelnuts, raw cacao powder, and pitted dates blended in the food processor until creamy, thick, and brownie-like. Lima beans, pressure cooked with a little wakame. Spice seeds such as cardamom, nutmeg, allspice, and black pepper. White rice, pressure cooked. And, of course, rolled oats, gluten-free, thoroughly cooked and steeped. These are the seeds I find that I can eat within reasonable moderation, without digestive distress, skin breakouts, dental pain, or other symptoms which were all very common for me back when I was eating lectin-heavy seeds such as cashews. We'll talk more about lectins later, but I want to note that roasted tahini has both less lectin content and less phytic acid than raw tahini. Prior to trying roasted tahini, I simply thought that I couldn't tolerate sesame seeds. Selenium. Selenium is a necessary component of the enzymes involved in the activation of the thyroid-stimulating hormone, TSH, which is responsible for osteoblasts. Contrary to how it sounds, the osteoblasts are the ones involved in building your bones. I remember it by associating blast with build. In other words, without selenium, your body won't get the message to build bones. I recommend one soaked Brazil nut per day because there is no other whole food source of selenium that is so efficient. A single Brazil nut provides more selenium than most people need in an entire day. And remember what I said in a previous lesson about needing to increase all nutrients in tandem? If you're consuming higher amounts of retinol, that is, preformed vitamin A, 
calcium, vitamin D, etc., then it is wise to also up your intake of other key nutrients such as selenium. Why soaked? Soaking seeds, including nuts, beans, and grains, reduces phytic acid, which we'll be talking about more later in this masterclass. If you don't like the flavor of Brazil nuts, you can blend one up in a smoothie or blend one into my hazelnut brownie recipe. Also, check for freshness. Brazil nuts often taste bad due to being old. Look for Brazil nuts that are lighter in color. They should be almost white on the inside, not brown. If you're allergic to nuts, other good sources of selenium include sesame seeds and goji berries. Zinc. Earlier in this masterclass, I outlined how you could get 2 grams of calcium from 2,000 calories of food. Because I made that menu omnivorous, I decided to give you a vegan example for zinc, especially since most web articles on zinc recommend meat, dairy, and eggs for your zinc. The following vegan menu provides 15.5 milligrams of zinc in a little under 2,000 calories. For breakfast, have some chocolate almond milk. For brunch, have some cucumber and celery with tahini. For lunch, enjoy a nice baked chili sweet potato. Then have a snack of a pomegranate, a Brazil nut, and a cup of blackberries. And for dinner, enjoy a couple nori wraps filled with spinach, hemp seed, ground flax seed, and salt, and broccoli rob with basil pesto. This meal plan is surprisingly nutritionally complete in most areas, although it only provides 1.5 grams of calcium rather than the 2 grams we're seeking. More problematically, it hardly contains any vitamin C or D. That said, you could flesh out a meal plan like this with whole food powders rich in vitamin C and supplements for vitamin D and vitamin B12. These last two I always recommend supplementing, even if you eat an omnivorous diet. The supply in our food is not reliable enough for most people. If you want to get well above 15 milligrams of zinc each day, you'll need a supplement. Here are two options, free of sweeteners, harmful preservatives and additives, that contain a complex of whole foods. On Garden of Life's Vitamin Code and Peak Performance's Raw Whole Food Zinc. If you're enjoying this masterclass so far, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe, and make time to watch the rest of the lessons. Also, if you're benefiting from my work, please consider buying one or more of my books or board games to support me. It really makes a difference. Look for links below this video. And now, I'd love to hear your story. Have you struggled with tooth decay or other bone loss? Comment below with your experiences or questions.